first thing is that we, if we're honest, currently fail to deliver services which meet the needs of clients. We've got countless organisations providing fragments of services to confuse clients, some of them statutory, some of them third sector. We have a much more pluralist provider base. I think the second thing we felt was that actually all of this is wasting a great deal of money. It's not actually sometimes the lack of public investment in those households and in those families, it's the fact that it's not being terribly well coordinated. That people working with different agencies don't know each other, they even know sometimes that there's another agency working with that family. I think we've been insufficiently innovative in the way we work. And innovation is especially important when resources are constrained. We're not going to get through the next five or ten years by shaving a bit here, slicing a bit there. We do need to think more radically about the way in which we deliver services. And genuine partnerships between organisations with different perspectives, especially between statutory and third sector organisations, I think are a very good way of developing greater innovation. One of the big problems that I guess everyone in this room, with the possible exception of the Office for the Third Sector, I'm being provocative. Uh, government departments need to rethink the way they operate. I mean, the way they operate at the moment in silos, with silo-based policies, silo-based inspections, silo-based allocation, ring-fencing of resources too, makes it sometimes almost impossible on the front line to deliver sensible services, certainly services that make sense for clients. The Third Sector does already provide key services, deliver key services, actually not as high a percentage as you might think, well in the single digit percentage. But of course some of those services are the glue which hold together a great deal of the services, other services provided for the public good. One of the things that Total Place has really brought out strongly is the difficulty that public agencies have investing in preventative work because they won't necessarily be the agency that gets the benefit, the financial benefit, of that uh, investment. And somehow we've never found a way in public services to get around that. So I think the third sector should be central to total place and its mission. And I accept the criticism. I think it would, we were too slow in putting it right at the heart. And I'm pleased to see that that's happening more and more. There's little real co-design of services with local government let alone with the third sector. And I hope that's one of the things that we're going to address much more uh, in the second phase of Total Place or the further development of Total Place. The second problem I think is too often the third sector organisations are contracted to deliver outcomes but don't receive the full economic costs. They don't receive full funding. There's overwhelming pressure on third sector organisations to agree the contract because of, well, because of their commitment to the clients and because if they don't, they'll effectively uh, lose their raison d'etre. Or well, sometimes the statutory sector will just take over the activity and take advantage of their broader, broader funding base. And there's been too many examples, I think, of that either being threatened or actually happening. And finally, in, the, in terms of the barriers, and. I think some people are going to find this a bit controversial. They said, look, we're in Whitehall, but what the hell? Um, my experience suggests that too few uh, of the most senior central government administrators recognize the full importance of the third sector's role. Lest all of this seems excessively sympathetic to the third sector, let me say that in the context of total place, there are also examples of individual voluntary organizations, which I think could do a lot more to collaborate with each other more effectively and with the statutory sector, and will maybe even merge for the benefit of clients. If joint procurement and sharing back office services make sense for the statutory sector, and it certainly does, then it makes sense for the third sector in a period of scarce resource. The total place starts and ends with clients, starts and ends with outcomes, is about trying to tackle the issues that really matter to local communities, and then maybe to move on from there to a more general and more mature relationship between all the organisations and between the statutory and the third sector. Actually what we're talking about in several place 
is leaders taking responsibility, a shared responsibility for the leadership of the place and the community. And that is a shift. And it is a more difficult job for leaders. But I think that is the only way, I'm absolutely convinced, the only way in which we're going to be able to deliver better services at less cost. And I do still believe that that can be done. Thanks very much.